Okay, I had some questions on how I do bushings and uh, I guess the first thing we need to do is talk about how I get the bushings out. So they make several different uh, deals that you can use to uh, get the bushings out. Uh, probably the main ones that I use are these two right here. Sometimes a smaller one. I used to use this one a lot back in the day and I have a smaller one of these. It's about about that size right there but apparently somebody liked it more than me because it's nowhere to be found anymore so somebody took it from me. And uh, you got different ones. I got that one there. Some I've made out of chisels. I just uh, however this one I made out of a bolt and probably a one-time use thing but it worked uh, and I got uh, some other tools that I use uh, made out of a bolt and I just cut notches in it and it just basically threads down you gotta have something to push against though uh, if you look at the 604 rebuild videos, I, I show this. That's what I use this one on. Uh, but like I say, you gotta have something to push against because what this is gonna do is thread into the bushing, and then when it bottoms out, it's gonna suck the bushing out. So this one I made out of C6 band uh, bolt. Did the same thing. Just cut uh, a couple grooves in it. Put two band nuts on it and tighten them down and I use that to uh, suck bushings out. Uh, some other things, this is the Toyota ones over here. This one is uh, for the older Toyota units and what you would do is, well, there's actually a washer that goes on here. You would uh, screw this into the bushing and then you would uh, hold the back side here and we tighten this down and it would basically do the same thing that this did instead of pushing it would pull and you just tighten it down and it would pull the bushing out and then uh, there's a for the bigger bushings it would just go further down uh, this one I'm, I'm special made for this one I special made for Toyotas, I mean Toyotas for Hondas. It's basically the same thing as this. I just took it and welded it onto a bolt, put a put a hex uh, piece of hex uh, Allen head in there and welded it to it, and then welded that to the to the bolt and just made it longer so I could actually reach down in there and, and do that. But most, uh, a lot of the bushings are the same. So, okay. So, um, that's just, you know, same thing. Then, when you're going to go and you're going to put them in, uh, first thing you need to do is look at your bushings and see where they're at. So. Let's just take this for an instance. All right, sometimes the bushings have to be in a certain spot. Like this one has to be down far enough that the lip of this bearing is not gonna it's not gonna interfere with that. So you need to look at where your your bushings are. You might even need to take a measurement and see how far down they are. Yeah, sometimes you don't, you know, you might have a feed hole that you don't want to be covering up. And uh, you got you might have to be in between two feed holes. You, you just don't know. So the wise thing to do is to, if you're not familiar with the unit, take a measurement and find out how far down it is. Now I found that on the 6L80s, most of them, <coughs> if you push, you take your bushing driver. This is the wrong one, but you take your bushing driver and you press that down and I found that most of these 6L80 bushings 
if I press it down to where the, the lip of this is flush with the top here, that's about the right distance. But that's not always the case, so you need to be careful of, you know, sometimes you got to line up a couple holes, sometimes you got to line up three holes in different places, so you, you got to be very careful. And this is the same, basically the same bushing. This is a 400, this is a 4L80E, and the center sport's pretty close to being the same. And this is early design 400, and uh, uh, early design. This is 400, this is 4L80, but the early design uh, 4L80s had a slot in it just like this instead of the two holes but it still had this hole over here so you know you just got to be mindful of what you got to line up a lot of your tail housing bushings have a oiling slot that you got to line up so you got to be careful of that some case bushings have oiling holes you got to line up <coughs> some case bushings you got a bracket and you might have two bushings and one of them be on each side of the feed hole. So, you know, you just got to look and see what you got before you start taking it out. Second step is taking it out. Then the third step is putting it in. So, uh, some have to be at different depths. So I got a couple things here set up for the, like the Hondas. I got this marked, uh, as I say, main shaft on the MAXA, and that's how deep in it needs to be. And then the other bushing is marked right up here. So I made special tools for installing them. These are these are some tools for the Honda bushings, and it sets it at a, at the right depth. So uh, you know, you just gotta gotta know what you're dealing with. This one here came with my bushing kit and it's specifically made for the 350s and it was set it at the correct depth there's three bushings on it uh, two come in from the the back side and what you would do is you'd set this one sets the deepest one you put it on here drive it down till it's it's all the way up that sets the deepest one and this is a shallow end and then uh, the other one uh, I forget how it goes. It's been so long since I've done one. Uh, one end does one side, and then the other end does the, the two, and it sets the one at, at the deep deep end, and then I think you drive it up flush to this one for the shallow end. So you just got to know what you got and deal with it that way. Uh, we'll put some bushings in in here in just a minute. Uh, get set up. I'll show you how I take them out. Some of them, the ones that you can just press out, they're easy to do. <clears throat> so the other ones uh, that you got to drive out, what you need to do is you need to look for where the bushing. If you can see where the bushing is put together, if you look on here, you can see the seam of where the the bushing is formed together. Now, if you can look on the outside, it's kind of hard to see a lot of times, but if you can look on the outside, because this is all you're going to see. If you can look on the outside here, you can see it's a little bit different right there. And sometimes you get fooled looking at it, but once you start driving and trying to split the, the bushing, usually that seam will show up and the you can go over there and get on it, it'll split a lot easier and come out a lot easier. So let me uh, get set up here and then we'll take some out and put some in. Okay. Now, a word of caution on some of your bushing kits. You would think that the word bushing kit would denote that you would get all the bushings that belong in that transmission. Don't always count on it. Uh, there's some bushing kits out there like uh, on 6R 80s for the Fords uh, they don't come with the pump bushing in the kit that just uh, baffles me I don't understand that you have to order the pump bushing separate if you want it you would think that would be the most important bushing that 
that there is but uh, they don't always they don't always give you everything so before you go driving the bushing out you want to make sure that you got one to replace it with because once you take it out you're done and you're, you're gonna have to replace it and if they don't make a bushing for it or you don't have it you're gonna be waiting and some other things uh, like on this 6L80 I noticed that this is the case bushing and it's got this what you would think is a lube hole and you would think that that has to line up with something well it doesn't and I'll, nobody can tell me why it's there because uh, there is a hole in the case but it doesn't line up with it and I've seen them in all kinds of different positions and so I called the guys up that are supposed to know about this kind of stuff and I said hey this bushing's got a got a hole in it is it supposed to line up with that hole in the case and they said no and I said well why is there a hole in the bushing like there's it needs to be lined up they didn't have an answer they don't know why it's got a hole in it so some things just don't make no sense but uh, you know you got to watch watch your bushings some of them look real similar to each other and they go in different spots like uh, some of them might have see the oil and groove right there there's got one it's got two they might have one spot might only have one oil and groove one spot might have three so count your oil and grooves and uh, look at them real close like this bushing kit right here if you look at this uh, this bushing right here has got dimples in it well this bushing kit doesn't have any bushings with dimples and I've seen two different bushing kits for this and it, one of them has the dimpled bushing and one doesn't now I'm kind of the of the mind those dimples are there for a reason and it's probably to collect oil inside there so I'm not going to put a, a smooth bushing in there where that dimpled bushing was I'll, I'm, I'm going to skip that bushing right there now uh, some of these other bushing kits that I've gotten do have it in there so then I'll replace it when it when I got one that's got it so and this is a Durabond bushing kit here I don't remember what the other brand is I don't think it's got a name on it um, but it's, it's got the factory style bushings in it so anyhow what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay attention to the the oil and grooves here we got one we got two so we got two here this is more than likely it this one's got four that one goes in the stator so just kind of set it to where it's the position it might gonna go in and there should be some interference before it goes in you're gonna have about two to three thousandths um, difference in the diameter of your bushing and the bore that it goes in to cause an interference fit so we know that this one should be able to fit there just fine get my bushing cutter and if I can look on here and find where the bushing is put together it will make life a lot easier and I think it's right there. split but it did tip it and we could it was able to pull it out so now where did I go here we are and find us a bushing driver that fits inside of it but it's loose enough that it's going to come back out so 
I got an arbor press that I put them in with. We're gonna go over here. And we're gonna press that dude in. And we're gonna go to the top of the bushing driver here. And that should be about the right depth for my bearing to be able to fit in there. And sometimes, like that, it gets stuck. Get some light taps on there and a lot of times the raised areas it'll loosen up if it doesn't we can get in here So this may fit a little tight on the shaft that I got that it needs to go in. And we find the shaft that it's supposed to go on to. And we'll try it on there. And if it fits a little snug, just like this one is. put this in from the other way this is the way it goes but I usually when I get one that's uh, kind of tight like that I usually go in from the other side Normally, we don't have this problem. So we got two options at this point. And we either drive this bushing back out and put another one in it if we got it or we're going to have to do some work on it to get it to where it works properly. And I don't know why it went in there so tight. Normally I don't have problems with these especially. Alright, we're going to drive this one out we're going to try a different one. Let's see if we got one over here. See, this is the other style. See the dimples in it? Since I got one, I might just stick it in there. Here we go. That's, that's the stator. Well, I may not have one. I may be fixing that one. It's a stator. Look like I got one. So we're gonna be trying to fix this one. So we can either hone it, use some sandpaper on it. You can see all the raised areas.
I think some of this stuff may be coming from uh, China or something because I've been having a lot of trouble here lately with uh, stuff that looks similar but it ain't it ain't right so we knock the high areas off of this and see what we got after that And if you cock a bushing, it can, especially if you got one on each end and you got it just a little bit lower on one side than the other, it creates problems. What you searching for? Huh? It was cracked. Okay, this one's just not going to go. I'm going to have to find me one. So let me find another one and uh, we'll be back. Okay, this is that other bushing kit. See, there's not a name on it that I can see. Anyhow, I'll try the bushing out of here. Here we go, two old grooves. Uh, let's see, where'd it go? All right, we'll try this one more time. A lot of times you can feel the difference too. It has more effort. See, this one's got a lot less effort until right there at the end. Maybe something, something about this hub. This one fits a lot better because I can get it out. So we'll see how it fits on here. Ain't much better we can turn. So we're good there. This one here, I think the opening is right there. And some things you need to be careful, like on this uh, 6R80 equivalent of this one, on this uh, hub, right underneath this bushing right here, there's a, a sleeve that's pressed into the shell and if you just go driving down on that and it hits that it'll grab the lip of that and bend it out then you just ruined it so you gotta be careful what's underneath the bushing also so we're gonna put this one in This one here, 
and then you go just below. Something about this bushing kit just ain't quite right. It's kind of tight. Everything about this one's wrong. Boy, I tell you what, I don't know what it is about this being put on camera, but it does not want to be seen. So, I'll try it again. Usually have no problems with my 6L80s. Just stick them right in there and, and it's fine. So I don't understand what's up, but for some reason it's not wanting to go. Okay, it's tighter than I like, but I can turn it by hand. And it's gonna have to do because I'm running out of bushings. There's something wrong with this hub. This machine too small or something. I've never had this trouble with uh, six L80s. Um, I'm running out of bushings though. I've put like 10 in there. And uh, this is the best I've gotten out of it yet, so. I'm going to leave it alone and go on to bigger and better things. <clears throat> Hopefully the rest of these are going to be okay. Alright, that's the wrong one. Two all grooves, two all grooves. There we go. That one felt pretty good. So we should be okay with it. Be fine. And this one here likes to walk up a lot, I've noticed. You notice this one here, try not to 
ding it up like that. You do take the little burr off. Now so we got an oil slot but we don't need to block down there. Where did we go? This one. And we want to go far enough, but not too far. We want to be a little bit below that bevel. And we're still not blocking the hole, so we're good there. Good for that. Go. came out good there so planet should fit, fit just fine in there yeah uh, let's see what else we can do uh, show you like this one this one's easy so all you got to do is find the bushing driver that fits it there we go I guess I grabbed the wrong bushing. This is now this is one that goes in the case. So then we just take this one, we just push it all the way through. Sometimes you need to use a bigger bushing driver to go over it because sometimes they'll try to split apart on you and you just kind of have to know when those situations are so you, you use a bigger bushing driver to start it and then use the one that fits down inside of it to finish it off. But. Um, what do you do if, if you don't have a bushing driver? Like I don't have one to fit this bearing here. And uh, to make sure we got one in our kit. Yep, we got one, so we're good. Don't make that mistake, I done that one time. I had to, <coughs> I got a kit from, yep. You can't do anything. Alright, so like on this one, I don't have a bushing driver for this. And I'll pop that out of there. And what I'll do is I bring this over here and I use this plate set on top right there center my 
bearing up so it's not cocked as best I can. It's still cocked a little bit. And I just use that to to bring it down. And then I'll tap it around. I'll tap it a little bit the rest of the way it needs to, to be flush right there. Actually, it's a little bit below flush. So, let's see. What else we got? Oh, we got the stator. Sometimes you got to be careful about what you're beating on. You don't want to put this on something and start knocking on it there because it, it might break that off. So, this one may be too big. Probably go with the smaller one. So like this one, I don't have the exact sized one. So what I would do, see, I can uh, I can use this to to drive it down there. And then what I could use is uh, either use a bigger bushing driver like that, or if it's yeah, come on, drop down in there. Everything's wanting to jack with me today. If it's small enough to fit underneath, I can just use the anvil of this to start it down in there. And I can use this one to drive it down below flush there. Good there. Okay, so your opening's over there. Let me go over here now. finish it off. Now, this one here, we can't use something to go down in there and, and push on it because we got that tube in there and we can't push on that tube. And I gotta have a small enough bushing cutter to get in there. I think the opening is right there. It's either right here or right there, but I think it's right there. over here but it should be able to get that out of there now
There we go. Now this one here, uh, gotta find a bushing driver. Probably go with that one right there. Should be good. And we'll try our hub in there. And we're good. So the only one left is the one in the case, and I think you get the a general idea. And uh, got the tail housing also. But basically those two push through. Uh, actually the one in the case I'll go ahead and show it to you because I don't use I can't use the arbor press for that so I just need the handle for the bushing driver where did we put it now oh, here it is. Okay, see this is the hole in the case I was talking about. Here's the hole in the bushing over here. And I've seen them everywhere. I've seen them down here, up here, over here. So apparently it don't matter. And uh, we just drive these out. And what I'll normally do on this one is I'll just drive it out pretty much out of there then I'll just uh, start driving this one in and when the other one falls out I know I'm, I'm right at being far enough and just fell out you should uh, give it one little whack and we should be good as long as we're not sticking up over here and we're not we're good for that. Alright, let me get this one and we'll do the pump and we'll talk about one other thing. If a bushing is spun out if it's not too torn up I found what you can do and you can't do this all the time but sometimes you can get in here and you get a get you a punch you got a really sharp point on it and what you're gonna do is get in here and you're gonna smack that dimple it and then you're gonna do a lot of them I do I do like three in a row right here because of how wide this is. And then I would stagger them. I'd do two. And I'd do three. And then I'd do two. And I'd just do that all the way around. And what you're doing is you're creating a surface area that the bushing can go in there and grab on. So that doesn't always work. You have to have a, a decent enough surface. If it's uh, spun out of there and it's all wallered out and and you can take the bushing and you can just set it there and it falls all the way through it's probably not going to work but if you can take a bushing and it doesn't you can't just push it through but it you know it kind of starts and then you could maybe take a bushing driver and push on it kind of hard or hit it with a hammer and it goes through you could probably get away with that little trick so that's that's one thing that you can do just dimple up the surface 
where it rides and put a bunch of them in there and uh, you might even want to put some Loctite in that situation some of the green Loctite and uh, it might get you by but don't don't always count on that and I don't know where the uh, camera died because I can't see because it's on top of my head so I don't know what what I've gotten and what I haven't gotten uh, the only other one is the one in the pump now I don't have a uh, the right size for this one either but I get close enough and I haven't had any troubles doing it this way yet so this is how I do it get my pump bushing I get a larger driver and I start it and down solid and I get the next one and uh, it's a little bit on the large side that one there probably worked Too small on that side. Too big. Too small. Well, the bushing driver's gonna get stuck on that side. It's got a little burr on it, looks like. Drive that down to the next level. And I flip it over, and it's just barely big enough to get on the edge of that. If you're careful, there we're all the way down. It's not going to put up a burr on there, and we, I should be okay. I don't feel one, so should be okay there. And uh, that's how I do the. Bushings in my 6L80s, actually any of them. I think I think I covered everything. Hope that helps you out.